Right, welcome to this uh, multiple codex review, two small codexes. You get these inside uh, the Rogue Trader Kill Team expansion set. Uh, I've shown the contents and sort of reviewed the whole product uh, there in that review video. Uh, and then I said I'd do a separate codex review uh, for these two, just to see what the rules are. These uh, codexes you get inside for your regular games. Uh, it says they're a supplement for Warhammer 40,000. So you're able to use these models and incorporate them into your games of 40k which is uh, I think it's a great idea great crossover there and it's wise I think for games workshop to do that so I'm going to review both of these just in the one video because they're quite small and then that way you'll be able to see all the rules uh, and get an idea of potentially how you could use these in your own games of 40k and incorporate them into your armies so we'll do the Lucidian Star Striders first of all cover that on so incredible models Really good. I love the regular troopers. They look great. And then you've got these unique characters as well. So we have a fair few rules to cover here in this uh, codex. Just the artwork, all the details about rogue traders and where they come from and how they fit into the 40k universe. Get this really good, cool dog here as well. This is the, the frontier. So, following abilities appear. Uh, common to several Elucidian Star Striders. Warrant of Trade. Model this ability can embark onto an Imperium transport even though the transport in question might normally only permit models with other faction keywords to do so. All other restrictions apply normally. So great, you're able to incorporate them into your army. Uh, Rogue Trader Retinue. This ability has no effect unless you, this army includes Lucia Vane or if it does so you can set up any of the units with this ability before you have uh, set up Lucia Vane Van. When you set up a Lucia Van during deployment, all units of this ability are set up in the same at the same time. When you set up a Lucia Van on the battlefield for the first time, all units of this ability must be set up within six, must be set up within six inches of her, or they must all be set up in the same transport as her. Uh, if they cannot be set up, their account is being destroyed. So you got to keep them together. So it's like a, a group squad. All or trait. If Lucia Van is your warlord, she always has the Explorator Fleetmaster Warlord trait below, which is this one. If your army is battleforged, you receive three additional command points. These can only be spent to use Elucidian Star Strider's stratagems. There's stratagems as well. Cool. So. Yes, so Lucia Van, this is what the whole squad revolves around here background information and uh, here she is it's a power level four give you an idea on points costs as well yeah there is points values I was hoping there was uh, 45 points includes weapons right so there you go not much cost at all uh, movement 6, weapon skill and ballistic skill 3, plus strength 3, toughness 3, 4 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 9, and a 4 up save. Uh, it's armed with a uh, monomolecular cane rapier, an heirloom pistol, and concussion grenades. Only one model per army. The heirloom pistols range 12 pistol, 1 strength, 4 minus 2, and 2 damage. Decent pistol. And the monomolecular cane rapier. His strength for the user, which is strength 3 and AP minus 4, 1 damage. And concussion grenade, grenade D3, range 6, strength 3. If the target is within an inch of a terrain feature, add 1 to this weapon's strength and damage characteristic. Uh, warrant of trade, we've seen that earlier on. Concealed area tech weapon, once per battle at the start of the fight phase, pick an enemy model within an inch of Lucy Van and roll dice on a 4 plus that model. Model's units offers D3 mortal wounds, bit of a surprise attack. Disruption field generator is a 4 plus invun save. And the multi spectral auspicator reroll hit rolls of one made for attacks made by a friendly Lucidian Star Striders units within six of her. So, not much really to the model. <laughs> um, perhaps the access to stratagems. Uh, may well be a bonus, but it's okay, but uh, nothing to be blown away by. Interesting little quirks going on there with the Aerotech weapon. And the weapons she carries are okay. 
So that's that one. Void's Men at Arms, which I have to say do look very, very cool. Uh, so Nietzsche's Squad. So you get standard Voidsman, Void, uh, Void Master Nietzsche, and then Axamillion. <laughs> so just to point these out, uh, Void Master uh, Nietzsche here, this one. Voids, regular Voidsman, and then Voidsman Growl uh, is just here. Oh, Axamillion's the dog. That's the dog, right, okay. So, there you go. So your Voidsman is just going to be a standard Guardsman, but the Ballistic Skill is actually 3+. plus. Our Voidsman will cost... Yeah, and it's your squad. Uh, it's up to 6 models in the unit. They're 6 points each. So, uh, Voidmaster Snitch. It's not here. Let's see what goes on with that. I think it's just your squad leader. I believe so. Uh, yeah, well, it's two wounds, two attacks, leisure eight and a five up save, just the, the extra there. Axe which is the dog, movement eight, three up weapon skill, and then two attacks, leisure five and a six up save. The unit contains Voidmaster, Niche, Axe the dog, and four Voidsmen. Only one of this unit can be included in your army. Three Voidsmen are each armed with LAS gun, LAS pistol, and concussion grenades. One Voidsman is armed with a rotor cannon. Laz pistol and concussion grenades. Right, so the rotor cannon, and you just pay for. No, I just think you get the rotor cannon. Can't see it here. No, I think you just get it all as part of the package of the squad. So the rotor cannon, heavy, four strength, four minus one, two damage, decent enough, range 24, so pretty cool. Get warrant of trade. Uh, Rogue Trader Retinue, which we've seen. Uh, Axeminion, the death, the death of Axeminion is ignored for purposes of morale. Uh, Laurel Retainers add one to the leadership characteristic of all models in this unit, this ho whilst wholly within six inches of Alicia Van. Right, so that's that squad. And then, uh, Laz Gun. The Void Master is under the Artificer Shotgun, Laz Pistol, and Cushion Grenades. The Artificer Shotgun is range 12, Assault 2, Strength 4, AP 0, but it's 2 damage. If it's within half range, it's plus one to the strength, making it strength five. Cool. Okay. So, cheap squad. Uh, Electro Masters, Masters here. And it's Larsen van der Grasse. Scours the frontiers for untapped sources of motive force. Interesting character. That's what Rogue Trader is all about, isn't it? These interesting characters. He's 22 points, including weapons. Power level 4. Just cover his power levels here. Nietzsche's squad is power level 3. And then Vine is power level 4. It's all quirky units to add into your army. Movement 6, weapon skill, ballistic skill 4, plus strength 3, toughness 3, 2 wounds, 2 attacks, leadership 8, and a 4 up save. Uh, it's armed with Voltaic Pistol, Concussion Grenades. The Voltaic Pistol is Pistol 1, Strength 5, AP 0, 1 damage. And each unmodified hit roll of a 6 for an attack with this weapon scores 3 hits. Oh, you only get one shot. Concussion Grenades already covered. Uh, so he has Warrant of Trade and Rogue Trader tra tra Retinue. Voltaigeist Array. Friendly, Elucidian Star Strategy units who can hold within 6. So this model has a 5 plus Invun. So Grant and a 5 plus Invun. And that's about it. Okay. Just an enhancement there to that squad. There's a great games workshop sensible the rules, not making these miniatures where they're ridiculously overpowered and everyone has to buy the box set to get them. It's just quite sensible really. Um uh, Regivant Adepts is next, which is this one here, I believe. So we've just covered him, Larson van der Grasse, that's the squad we've covered. And then uh, Saint Tassia. So, elite, by the way, elite choice. 
power level 1. Uh, movement 6, weapon skill, ballistic skill 4 plus, strength 3, toughness 3, 2 wounds, 2 attacks, leadership 7 and 5 up save. Sound with a scalpel claw, last pistol and concussion grenades, only one model per army. Scalpel claw is strength, use OP minus 1 in combat, so nothing there. Uh, constant companion. Senestasia minced does not take up a slot in the detachment that includes Lucia Van. Healing Serum. At the end of your movement phase, this model can attempt to heal a single friendly Lucidian Star Striders infantry unit within 3 inches. If it does so, roll D6 and a 4 plus 1 model in the unit regains 1 lost wound. If the unit is Nietzsche's squad, one model slain earlier in the battle is returned to the unit instead. Right, so you can bring models back. Very cool. Yeah, very cool. Bring your squad members back. I do like the idea of that. 17 points. That one. Worth it, I think. Difficult Executioners. Uh, Kenoso Prond. Power level 3. 25 points. Movement 7. Power level 3. Uh, weapon skill 3 plus. Ballistic skill 4 plus. Strength 4. Toughest 3. 2 wounds. 4 attacks. Leadership 8 and a 5 up save. Uh, Dark Mask. Is armed with the Defcot Power Blade, the Dark Mask, and Concussion Grenades, only one model per army. The Dark Mask is range 9, pistol 1, strength 1. It always wounds on a 2, plus, unless it's a Titanic or a vehicle. And then it's AP minus 1, 1 damage. Defcot Power Blade, strength for the user, which is strength 4, AP minus 2, and 1 damage. And then Concussion Grenades. Uh, it has Uncanny Reflexes, a 5 plus Invun. Warrant of Trade and Rogue Trader Retinue and then Zealot. You foul, re roll failed hit rolls for this model in a turn in which it charged. Made heroic intervention or was charged by an enemy unit. So pretty good. Yeah, not too bad at all. And that's it. Then we're on to uh, stratagems that are available. So if your army's battle forged and includes Lucia Van, you have access to the stratagems shown below, meaning you can spend command points to activate them. These help to reflect the unique tactics and strategies used by Lucia Van and the Lucidian Star Striders on the battlefield. So Executioner Shell. Use this stratagem in your shooting phase before Void Master Niche attacks with his Artificer Shotgun. Only make a single hit roll for this weapon this phase, but add three to the roll. If the target is hit, it suffers one mortal wound instead of the normal damage. It's like an Executioner Shell is to kill off a model. We've lost like a one deadly shot. Cool. Digital laser regalia. Uh, they use the strash immediately. It's one command point after fighting with Lucy Van. Uh, resolve one additional attack against an enemy unit of an inch of her. If the attack hits, the enemy unit suffers D3 mortal wounds instead of the normal damage. Cool. Yeah, nicely. He's good. Recover area attack at any cost. One command point. Use the strash at the end of your turn. If Larsen van der Graas is within 3 inches of an objective marker to the start of your next turn. Add 1 to save and throws made for him and increase his attacks by 1. Okay. There's more here, there's 5 more. Killing Strikes is next. Use this stratagem before fighting with Canoso Prond in the fight phase. To the end of the phase, the damage, attack, the damage characteristic of her power blades is increased to D3 when targeting infantry units. Right, so there's a, a bonus there. Which is helpful. Combat uh, resuscitation. Use your strategy at the end of one command point. At, at the end of your movement phase, after Santasia Minst has attempted to heal a unit, she can immediately attempt to heal a unit again. This can be the same unit or a different Elucidian Star Striders infantry unit from your army. So, second chance to do that. Uh, one with the electro motive force. Oh, come on. I'm one with the force. <laughs> One with the electromotive force. Oh dear, one command point. Use the stratagem in your movement phase before moving Lars and Van der Graas. Instead of moving him normally, remove him from the battlefield. At the end of the movement phase, set him up anywhere on the battlefield that's more than nine inches from enemy models. Cool. Yeah, handy for objective grabbing and so on. Uh, Logis Interrogator Scanner, one command point. Use the stratagem before the battle to either reveal D3 hidden setup markers if your opponent is using concealed deployment or identify a mysterious objective anywhere on the battlefield. Alternatively, use a stratagem in your shooting phase before attacking with Larsen van der Graas. Ignore penalties to, to his hit rolls this phase. 
And then last one, personal teleportarium chamber, one command point. Use this stratagem before deployment, or during deployment. Set up all Elucidian and Star Striders units from your army in a teleportarium chamber instead of placing them on the battlefield. At the end of any of your movement phases, they can teleport into battle. Set them up anywhere on the battlefield that's more than nine inches from any models. Cool, so they can all turn up. Uh, yeah, there's that surprise element. That's very cool. It's only one command point to do. So I like, I like the idea of that one. Yeah, great fun. I, and that's the, the, the thing here. It's just a fun squad to have. You know, if you, you turn up to a game and your friend says, oh, I've painted up my new models from the Rogue Traeger set. I'm going to use them in my game. They're going to be part of my Astro Minotaur army. Great fun. Really good fun. So none of these would strike me as particularly, you know, overpowered and silly idea of, you know, just it's new models. Everyone needs to buy them, so I'll just make them ridiculously good. It's just quite sensible, really. But as a little squad, a full squad, there's loads of little bonuses and stratagems, so it seems to be worth taking the whole squad together. All these little characters and so on. Fascinating. Really, really interesting. Okay. Very cool. Beautiful models. Enjoy. I imagine you have fun painting them up. I do like the colour scheme for these, these voidsmen here. Is that enough to use them for squads? Guardsmen, not really. They'd have to do a 10 man box set. I don't know if they'll do that, but you never know. There it is. That's uh, the Obsidian Star Striders. Beautiful models, and that's the rules covered there. So then now it's the Jella Pox Infected. Something at the other end of the spectrum. It's completely different to the extreme here. Who knows what the rules are going to be for these. <laughs> Weird abominations. So, you know, sort of bizarre Imperial characters against weird enemy characters and models that the opponent may have. So, infection rising. There they are. Quite a spread. Contagious contingent. So, disgustingly resilient. I mean, what a bunch of units to add into your Death Guard army. <laughs> Just look at the models here, they're crazy. Uh, D6, roll D6 each time all this ability loses a wound, and a 5 plus you do not lose the wound. So it's, it's a brilliant roll, it's very good for Death Guard. And so these have it, if they have that. Uh, Volgar's followers, this ability has no effect unless your army includes Volgar. Frice Cursed, if it does, you cannot set up any units of this ability before you're set up. Olga Frice Cursed, so he has to be deployed first. When you set up Frice Cursed, cursed uh, during deployment, all units of this ability are set up at the same time. When you set up Frice Cursed on the battlefield for the first time, all units of this ability must be set up within six inches of him. Uh, if they cannot be set up, they count as destroyed. So, same principles in the, uh, for the Lucidian Star Striders. If you're going to take this squad, they have all got to turn up together. Whatever size squad you go for. Warlord traits, if he is the Warlord, he always has the Twisted Brilliance Warlord trait below. If your army is battleforged, you receive three additional command points. These can only be spent to use Jellapox infected stratagems. Okay. I just can't stop looking at the models. You know, it's the paint job as well. The colours, the spectrum of colours being used here is incredible. The more you look at these, the more little details are, are visible. It's amazing, right? Here he is then, Frice Cursed. Volgar Frice Cursed. It's strange. Power level 5. Movement 5. 3 plus weapon skill, 6 plus ballistic skill, strength 5, toughness 5, 5 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 9 to 6 up save. He's tough. He's armed with a flesh ripper. Let's just get out. Oh, look at this. Look, here they are. All mixed in with the Death Guard. Wow. Uh, he's 65 points. I think he's the most expensive model in points so, so far of all of them. Yep, of the entire set. 
uh, flesh ripper claws and a belly flamer <laughs> and you want model per army belly flamer then it's gonna be flame isn't it auto hits yeah assault d6 range 8 strength 4 ap0 1 damage uh, flesh ripper claws plus one strength he fights in strength 6 ap minus 2 and 2 damage he is nasty in close combat disgustingly resilient as well lord of resentment reroll hit rolls of one made for friendly jelloprox infected units within six of uh, volgra so good bonus bionic abomination he has a five plus invun save yeah, and combine that with your disgustingly resilient he's tough and then horrific visage minus one for the leadership characteristic of units whilst they're in six inches of enemy models with this ability Okay, so yeah, he's solid enough. Solid enough. He's an HQ choice. Then onto troops, the Vox Shamblers. So again, I can imagine you could just, even if you don't want to use these special rules, you could just incorporate them into your box walkers units. No problem at all. They would fit in a treat. But if you do decide to take them, power level two troops choice, you get five Jelloprox mutants. They have mutated limbs and improvised weapons, and they're armed with frag grenades. Movement 5, weapon skill and ballistic skill 4+, plus. strength 4, toughness 4, 1 wound, 2 attacks, leadership 6, and a 6 up save. Disgustingly resilient and Volgrass followers, so have to deploy with them. Um, the mutated limbs and improvised weapons, the strength user it is AP-1 with their attacks. And frag grenade rules. Uh, they have a 5 plus in fun save for Jella Corst Masks. Each time you roll an unmodified saving for over six. In the fight phase, the unit that made the attack suffers a mortal wound after it made all of its attacks. And that's it. The shamblers are eight points each. You can take up to three. Okay, so that is a unit. They do move out. Once you've deployed, they are a separate unit. The three of them. Uh, glinchlings. <laughs> I don't know what to think of these. They're strange. They're four points each. And you can have a unit of four of them. Power level two, troops choice. Movement five, weapon skill four plus. No ballistic skill, strength toughness two, one wound, two attacks. Bishop seven and six up save. They're armed with diseased claws and fangs. And only one unit per army. It's a Strength for the user, AP0, 1 damage, and you can reroll wound rolls of 1. Disgustingly resilient. They have a 5 plus invun save for demonic and squishable. Models in this unit only receive the benefit of the disgustingly resilient ability against attacks with a damage characteristic of 1. Alright, so if it's anything higher, they just squish. <laughs> Weapon glitch. Subtract 1 from hit rolls made for attacks with ranged weapons that target this unit. Okay, so minus 1 to hit. That's about it. Yeah, they're armed with, he's got guts. He has a bone and a hand with a finger missing. <laughs> he has a wooden sword and this one has a smashed bottle. <laughs> I don't know what to think of, it's so weird. Oh dear. Nightmare hulks. God, look at these, right? So all three of these are sort of the, the general same kind of unit. Uh, the hole breakers. 31 points a model. You have three of them. So it's a unit of three. They're elite. Power level six. The hull breakers. They're very cool. Very strange. Great effects painted on here. Yeah, painting effects are incredible. So, uh, movement five. Weapon skill four plus. Strength five. Toughness, five, four wounds, three attacks, leadership seven to six up save. Then you got Nasha Screamer. Not sure who's who. Uh, Nasha Screamer, it's the guy with the big meat cleaver. That one there. Uh, so the unit contains two Nightmare Hulks and Nasha Screamer. Each model with its hideous mutations. Ganesha Scream is also armed with a plague cleaver, only one unit per army. So, hideous mutations, uh, strength for the user, which is strength five, even minus two and two damage, that's nasty. And then plague cleaver, strength 
If the user, minus two and two damage, reroll wound rolls of one for the weapon. And the horrific visage, minus one to the leadership characteristic of units whilst they're within three, six inches of any enemy models with this ability. So they are looking about, um, about 90, well, 93 points. I believe. Yep. 93 points for them, and they're nasty enough. Be nasty enough. So, other keywords, just to. Just for your crossover, they do have Nurgle. They've all got Nurgle. It's all Nurgle stuff here. Yeah, the whole lot. So, that's where you. Any crossover going on with the rules. So, Mutoid Vermin. There's so these three types of units here Ice Stinger Swarms, uh, Curse Mitts, or Curse Mites, and <laughs> Sludge Grubs. Oh dear. So, Ice Stinger Swarms, your flies, Glitchlings we've covered, Sludge Grubs is just here, and then Curse Mites, little fleas. Oh boy, right, so Ice Stinger Swarms, power level one. Three points each. Movement ten. Four plus weapon skill. No ballistic skill. Strength two. Toughness two. One wound. D three attacks. Leadership eight and seven up save. Uh, the spawning barb is strength to use AP zero one damage. Any unmodified hit roll of a six made for this weapon automatically results in a wound. Do not make a wound roll for the attack. And then mutoid vermin. This unit does not take up a slot in the detachment that includes Volgraf Rice Cursed. Buzzing Swarm, subtract one from hit rolls for attacks against this unit. And Hatchlings, add one slay model to this unit at the start of every turn. Oh no, so they automatically uh, reappear. Great. great, great fun rules. Really is good fun stuff here. Curse Mites, Mites, Mites. Three points again, power level one. And Movement 8, 4 up weapon skill, and the same as above here. 2 attacks though, and 6 up so. Uh, blood sucking proboscis. Strength the user, AP 0, 1 damage, any hit roll of 6, unmodified is 2, equals 2 hits. Um, mutoid vermin, same as above, leaping insectus. Leaping insectoids, you reroll foul charge rolls for this unit. In addition, whenever this unit piles in or consolidates, you can move six inches instead of three. And then sludge grubs. Four points. These should be a bit better. Be uh, a bit better here. Uh, power level one. Five inch move, so slower. Weapon skill, ballistic skill, four plus. Strength three, toughness two, one wound, one attack. Leadership eight, six up save. Then I'm going to do a fanged more and stinger, as well as acid spit. So this. The Fanged Maw and Stinger is melee weapon, strength user AP minus one. And the Acid Spit is pistol one, range eight, strength user AP minus one. Uh, Mutoid Vermin, this unit does not take up a slot, includes Volgraf Rice Cursed. And then Caustic Blood, roll a d6 each time model in this unit is slain in the fight phase. On a sixth unit that killed the model suffers a mortal wound after it has made all its attacks. So yeah, fascinating. I mean, big spread of units actually. Considering it's all come from just the one expansion pack. So then your stratagems is eight that are available. Mutoid infestation, one command point. These are all one command point. Use at the end of your movement phase. Choose a unit of mutoid vermin from your army that's been destroyed. Set up this unit anywhere, hold within twelve inches of a friendly Jellaprox infected unit and more than nine inches from enemy models, so the ability to move around with that one. Uh, fiery Demise, one command point, use a stratagem when Volga Frice Cursed is slain before removing him from the battlefield or d6 for each enemy, each unit in six, on a four plus it takes a mortal wound. Okay, so just when he sort of explodes. Uh, corruption Decay, Use a stratagem at the start of the fight phase. Choose an enemy unit within three inches of a Jellaprox infected unit from your army. To the end of the phase, add one to all wound rolls made for Jellaprox infected models from your army whilst they target that enemy unit. So it's helpful enough. Rancid Vomit. Use a stratagem in your shooting phase. Choose a whole break breakers model from your army. Then choose an enemy unit within six of it that is visible to it. Roll 3d6. Each five plus is a mortal wound. 
Okay, uh, machine glitch. Use a strategy of glitchlings from your army as brought on as fought in the fight phase. Choose an enemy vehicle within an inch of that unit. Roll d6 for each model in your unit. A four plus. It's a mortal wound. Cool. Like that. It's recording glitches and causing glitches and trouble for the vehicles. And then uh, jello shift. <laughs> Use a strategy before you move the Vox shamblers in the movement phase. Instead of moving this unit normally, it can make a jello shift. Remove this unit from the battlefield. At the end of movement phase, set it up again anywhere that is more than nine inches from enemy models. Cool. And then insane gibberings. Use a stratagem at the start of the enemy psychic phase until the end of the phase. Subtract one from the psychic test taken for enemy psychers whilst they're in 18. A Volga for Ice Curse. That could be helpful. And twisted blessings. Use a stratagem at the end of your movement phase. Choose a whole breakers model from your army. It regains a wound. That's it. And it costs you a whole command point to do it. So yeah, some helpful ones there. But there they are, all incorporated into Death Guard Army. What a spread though. What a... Yeah, I'd imagine if you enjoy painting models, you know, there's different types of people who are into 40k. There's those who are just into the gaming side of things. I, I try to be... The, both, I enjoy playing, I enjoy collecting and painting. There's others who really like to immerse themselves and just paint individual models. This is gonna be a real treat to paint these up because your, your spectrum of colors, your variety of units, the incredible sculpting work, you have great fun. You know, and you, it's all one-offs. You paint them once, you can paint something else. Incredible models. Yeah, so. Uh, impressive stuff but that's the rules covered here in this video uh, leave your own comments and feedback and your impressions uh, of the rules here and how you think you might use the models maybe death guard players if you're watching uh, you can leave your own comments and feedback there as well do these models do the units of the rules appeal to you uh, is, is it just for fun to use these or, or could you find a use for them in your army this and imperial players as well how about this one uh, using uh, this specialised unit in your actual lists for games of Warhammer 40,000. That's the reviews uh, there for these two small codexes that came along with the Kill Team expansion set for, uh, with the Rogue Trade set for Kill Team. There it is, that's the review. Keep a look out for more reviews on the channel. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.